How are you, my friends? In this video, I'm presenting eight old exams, questions related to trigonometric functions of real numbers. This is coming from lecture 14 of pre-calculus course. Question number one, find the reference angle of t equals five pi over seven, and another question, t equals minus seven pi over nine. First, we have to locate where is this angle? Five pi over seven. See, five pi over seven is less than pi. So it is here in quadrant two. In quadrant two, the formula says t prime, which is the reference angle, pi minus the angle itself, t. So pi minus five pi over seven. Now for b part, t minus seven pi over nine. This is a negative angle. Let's find the coterminal. So we can add multiple of two pi's, two pi, four pi, six pi, eight pi, until we get a positive angle between zero and two pi. So if we add minus seven pi over nine, we add two pi to that angle, we get 11 pi over nine. 11 pi over nine is in quadrant three. So this one also minus seven pi over nine lies in quadrant three in the negative and the other one here in the coterminal in the positive. So to find the reference in quadrant three, we say T prime is the coterminal, which is 11 pi over nine minus pi. See all this coterminal 11 pi over nine minus the pi, we get this small angle T prime, which is two pi over nine. Let's find the reference angle of the angle 10 radians. And here we have five choices as a multiple choice question. We have to locate where is 10 radians. You have to know that the complete cycle is two pi. We know that, which is 6.28. So just compare 6.28 to 10 to see where is angle 10 radians. So I mentioned here two pi is the complete cycle. Now 10 is more than complete cycle, more than two pi. So we subtract 10 minus two pi. This is the coterminal. 10 minus two pi is the coterminal, which is 10 minus 6.28, approximately 3.72. See 3.72 is more than the pi. The pi by itself, one pi, 3.14. So 3.72 will be here. So angle 10 radians and the coterminal, they both lie in quadrant three. To find the reference, you say the angle itself, the coterminal, minus the pi. So 10 minus two pi, that's the coterminal, minus the pi, so which is 10 minus three pi, and the answer is uh, C, yes. Here we have cotan of T is equal to four given, and cosecant of T is less than zero. Let's find this expression, the value for this expression. If you go and review lecture 14, you will see that if you have any function, trigonometric function given, and the condition to know the quadrant, then you can find the other functions. So cotan of t is four. First, let's talk about the quadrant. See, cotan is four, that means positive. So either quadrant one or three. Cosecant is less than zero negative. Cosecant negative means sine negative. So the angle T lies in quadrant three for sure. Now let's use the reciprocal here. Cotan of T is equal to four. So I can find tan T, which is one over four. See, this is tan T now. Now let's look at the formula. One plus cotan squared of T is equal to cosecant squared of T. So cosecant squared will be one plus four squared 17. So cosecant t would be plus or minus square root of 17. I take the negative because in quadrant three, the angle. Now also I say one plus tan squared is equal secant squared. Tan of t is one over four. So let's find secant of t on the next slide. So secant of t will be one plus one over 16, secant squared for sure. So secant of t will be plus or minus square root of 17 over four, I choose the negative. 
So let's find the square root of one. This is what we need. The square root of one plus cosecant squared. So I put minus square root of 17 squared under the radical plus square root of 34 in the question. So I can split that into square root of two times square root of 17. Secant of t will be negative here. See, minus square root of 17 over four. Now this one is 17 plus one square root of 18. Also square root of 18 will be square root of nine times square root of two, which is three square root of two, that one here. Square root of 17, square root of 17 is 17. And there's a square root of two with the negative divided by four. LCD is four. So it will be minus five square root of two divided by four is the answer. Find the exact value of 10 square root of six sine seven pi over six times cosine 675 degrees minus 10 38 pi over three. We have to find three values here, sine, cosine, and tan of these angles. Then we can multiply and subtract. Let's see. We find the coterminal angle if needed. If needed means if the angle is greater than two pi or greater than 360 or negative. Now we look at the first one here, sine seven pi over six. The angle seven pi over six lies in quadrant three. So there is no need for coterminal. So directly we find the reference. Quadrant three, we take the angle minus the pi, which is pi over six. Now the second one here, six, seven, five. Let's find the coterminal. This is more than 360. So we subtract multiples of 360. We can subtract one time 360, two times, three times, until we get an angle, positive angle between zero and 360. So if we subtract here 360, we get 315. Now 315 lies in quadrant four. Let's find the reference. 360 in quadrant four minus the angle, 315 will be 45. Now let's see the third one, 38 pi over three. For sure, this is more than two pi. Now there's a little hint here. This is a big angle, 38 pi over three. You have to know what to subtract. You have to subtract multiples of two pi, which means two pi, four pi, six pi, eight pi, 10 pi. How do you know? Just quickly here, divide 38 by three. So you get 12 point something. We don't care about the point something. So we care about 12, 12 times three will be 36. So I can, I have to subtract 12 pi. 12 pi means six times two pi, you see? So six times complete cycle, I have to subtract. So this is 12 times three, 38. So when you subtract, you get two pi over three. Two pi over three lies in quadrant two, which is 120 degrees. So the reference will be pi minus two pi over three, which is pi over three. So now in this slide, we found the reference angle for these three. Now we, let's continue. So this one here in quadrant three, see, then you write sine. Sine in quadrant three is negative. So I have to put a minus. Sine, the reference, you see, the reference pi over six. Quadrant four, six, seven, five. So that's a plus here because the cosine is plus in quadrant four. Cosine, the reference 45. See, there's a minus in the question here, tan 38 pi over three. This is in quadrant two, the tan is negative. So I put minus because of the quadrant two. Tan, the reference, whatever the reference was, pi over three. You see the reference here down, pi over three. Now we know sine pi over six, we know cosine 45, we know tan pi over three, I wrote them here. So sine pi over six, which is sine 30 is half. So there is a minus half, cosine 45 square root of two over two. This is a minus, and this is another minus in the bracket. Tan pi over three is square root of three. Now let's see, multiply here. Two and two, this is four down, and there is a minus, and there is a 10 square root of six, square root of two will be square root of 12, and this is a plus. So square root of 12 will be four times three. So two out minus 20 square root of three divided by four. So find the LCD here, four over four, okay? So minus 16 over four, which is minus four square root of three is the answer. Determine whether each function is even odd or neither. You have to check. 
So you know the, the, the method. The method is replace x by minus x and see what do we get. Now, f of minus x, I put minus x cosine of minus x also. Every x, I put minus x. This will stay. Cosine of minus x, I know here, remember, cosine of minus t is equal to cosine t. The cosine function by itself is even. So that's cosine of x. Now, when you multiply, you get minus x cosine of x, which is minus f of x. Now, since this is definition here, f of minus x is equal minus f of x, then the function is odd. All this is odd. Second one, absolute value of x secant squared. Now let's find f of minus x. f of minus x will be absolute value of minus x, cosecant squared of minus x. Absolute value of minus x will be the same as absolute value of x. This is from the algebra course. This is a squared. Cosecant of minus t is minus cosecant of t. See, this is a minus inside because that's an odd function. Squared. Squared, the minus will disappear. So we get cosecant squared, which is the same as the function. So this function is even function. Find the exact value. This is a really nice question of sine minus 41 pi over 4 times tan 62 pi over 3. Now, for sure, this is a negative angle. You can, you can deal with it as even and odd in the, in the functions. This one is also larger, angle larger than two pi, so we have to find the coterminal. Let's see. Here I say the sine is an odd function. So sine of minus t is minus sine t. So I can take this minus and can put it outside. If this is a cosine function, the cosine will disappear because it's an even function. Now let's find the coterminal of 41 pi over four. Just a little hint, I told you before, divide 41 by four, just approximately 10. So 10 pi means five multiples of two pi. So 41 pi over four, we subtract 10 pi so the reference here, this is 45. So this is the same as the reference. It's in quadrant one. Now 62 pi over three is greater than two pi. Let's find the coterminal. Also we divide 62 by three, we get 20. 20 means 10 times complete cycle, 10 times two pi. So it will be two pi over three, which is in quadrant two. And the reference will be pi minus two pi over three, which will be pi over three. So the tan now in quadrant two, remember tan would be minus tan times tan of the reference. See? So it will be minus square root of three. And this is a plus. Why it's plus? It's in quadrant one. So now the sign of all this will be minus. See, there is a minus there. Here's, there's a minus here. Square root of two over two times minus square root of three, which is square root of six divided by two. Now question number seven says, if cosecant of t is equal minus two and t in the interval zero to two pi, let's find the product of the exact values of t. Let's see from cosecant of t minus two, we can find sine of t because sine of t is the reciprocal of cosecant of t. So sine of t will be minus half. So we ask minus half is negative minus half. So the angle lies either in quadrant three or four between zero and two pi. So the sign here, if you take only the value, which is half, that means the reference angle is pi over six, which is 30 degrees. So the first t in quadrant three will be t pi t equals pi plus pi over six, which is seven pi over six. That's in quadrant three. Now in quadrant four, we say two pi minus the reference. The reference now is pi over six. So two pi minus pi over six would be 11 pi over six. This is in quadrant four. Let's find the product of the angle in radians. Seven pi over six multiply 11 pi over six. So it will be 77 pi squared over 36. 
Question number eight, let's express tan of t in terms of cosine of t. So we have to find the formula tan of t equals something in terms of cosine of t, where t lies in quadrant three. I'm presenting here two methods. You can choose any one you like. The first one, let's use the quotient tan of t is equal sine of t divided by cosine of t. So I can leave cosine of t because I need it here. Then I can use the bithagonal identity sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t is equal to one. So I find sine squared of t one minus cosine squared of t. So sine of t will be plus or minus this one. We take sine minus because the t lies in quadrant three. So I put here instead of sine t minus square root of one minus cosine squared of t divided by cosine of t, this is tan of t. Another way I can start with one plus tan squared of t is equal secant squared of t. So I leave tan squared here, then I take one on the other side, becomes minus one. Secant of t is one over cosine of t. Since we have a squared, we squared this one. And then we combine these fractions here, it becomes one minus cosine squared of t divided by cosine squared of t. Take the square root, so tan of t will be minus, so we have a plus or minus. Why we take the minus? Because in quadrant three, the tan should be positive. And in quadrant three, the cosine by itself here is negative. See, we have to put the minus there with the square root divided by cosine of t, which is negative number. So when you divide them, you get the positive tan of t in quadrant three. Be careful. This method maybe is easier for you, but this is the same answer. Now, here are the answers of the eight questions. For other examples and the rules, you can check please the lecture 14, pre-calculus course, trigonometric functions of real numbers. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. I hope I can see you in another video with another topic. Thank you very much.